All right. Um, been a long week for me over this past week. Uh, a whole lot of different things going on at work. Things that ended up requiring like, you know, three or four hours of driving every day just to accomplish the things that I, I had to get done. Uh, very fatiguing. And it got me over the, the entire week, kind of got me thinking about the word weary. Um, about the whole mindset. Because the Bible tells you, we've preached on it before here, several other people here preached on it. Uh, the Bible tells you to be not weary. And it says it several times throughout Scripture. And I got to thinking about that. About what that means. And what it's talking about. Uh, now, some of the common thoughts and or thought patterns with that is uh, be not weary. Especially where it says be not weary in well-doing. Talk about preaching the Word of God, or going out and witnessing, telling people about my Lord Jesus, uh, how to be saved, things like that. Um, I started wondering, is that, does anyone really get weary of witnessing for the Lord Jesus Christ, or preaching the Word of God? Uh, I mean, when I, when I get up here to preach, I, I imagine the other gentlemen there are about the same. We get up and start preaching, there's nothing that gets me, I don't get weary in doing this. You know, if the Lord's going to use it and He's going to do something with it, praise God and keep me out of the way, but uh, use me for this opportunity. I don't get weary doing that. Going out and, you know, telling somebody about my Lord Jesus. There's a song, I think the young woman's name is Ann Wilson or something like that, but a song she came out with recently is called My Jesus. And the whole basis of that song is, you know, let me tell you about, are you burdened? Are you tired? Things hard on you. Let me tell you about my Jesus. I've never gotten weary telling somebody about Jesus. Ever. I mean, and I'm going to be honest. If you at any point get tired of talking about Jesus, there's a different message I have for you. It has a lot to do with telling you how to ask Jesus to come to your heart and save you. Because you got other problems. But any blood-bought saint of God, saved individual... I don't know one that gets tired or weary of talking about Jesus. So that got me diving into it. Like, maybe we should look at the context of what the Bible is talking about. When he says, be not weary in well-doing. Because it can't, I mean, I'm not special. I'm not this, this wonderful person that is, I'm just so godly that, you know, I don't get weary about preaching or witnessing or talking about Jesus. Or, so it can't just be that. It has to be something else. So I decided to dive into that. And that's what we'll look at today. Uh, go ahead and turn your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. We're going to start reading at verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, beginning at verse 10. The Bible says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you. That if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you, among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. You see, when you dive into the context of well-doing, you know what God's actually talking about? Working. Actual, physical work. That's where you're going. You're not going to get weary talking about my Lord Jesus Christ. If you're called to preach and you, you get up here, now maybe you don't like the lifestyle of a preacher. Maybe that's burdensome for you. But when you actually get up here and you open up the Bible and you start reading off the notes and you go through the different Bible verses and then you start preaching, you don't get weary. Somebody's lost and you're telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ and you can see in their eyes that they're burdened and their life is weighing on them and they're lost and they don't know what to do. And they're looking to you for the answer. And you got the opportunity to tell them that Jesus died on the cross for all that sin they carry. You don't get weary doing that. But you know what you will get weary doing? That whole three hours of driving last night I did. The whole drive. I could feel the weary spirit settling in on me. 
And now understand, there's a difference between weary and tired. They're not the same thing. Tired, you work hard, you come home, you kick off your boots, you sit down for a minute, and your feet are a little bit sore. You're tired because you did what you were supposed to do. You worked. You're supposed to be tired. But weary is a state of your spirit. When your spirit starts to feel burdened and heavy, you start to feel that sense of giving up. That's weary. Man, a lot of that drive last night, I started feeling that weary weight on me. And that's what the Lord's warning you about. Because I'm going to tell you what, the Bible says if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't even eat. There, there is none of this whole, well, be charitable. He, he you know, you go got to give him some food, give that person that. The Bible says if you won't work, you shouldn't eat. I, that's not me. That's God. That's how important work is. And he knew that it wouldn't just physically fatigue you, which is okay. That's actually a good thing. It keeps you from being that busybody. Notice what he said up there in verse 11 toward the end of it. He says, among you disorderly working not at all, but are busybodies. Busybody is somebody sitting there and backbiting and talking behind somebody's back and doing little mischievous things that aren't good and aren't prosperous. Busybodies, there are people out there sinning. And what, what led to that? Work would not work. Working not at all, but are busybodies. You see, get that, when you get that physical fatigue and you're tired, that's a good thing. It keeps you from sinning. Rarely, rarely do you find a man that worked hard all week. I mean hard. His feet are sore, sweating every day. And then he comes home after working a long, hard week. Come Friday night, is he at all interested in going clubbing? No, he's interested in taking his boots off and sitting back, getting something cold, some cold water or something, an iced tea if you're from the south. Sit back and relax and enjoy the fruits and the work of his labor. So that fatigue, that physical fatigue is a good thing. It'll keep you from sinning. But he was worried that you'd also get weary. He told you, be not weary in well-doing. Well-doing as in work. Don't let it weigh on your spirit. That fatigue you feel is good for your body, it's good for your spirit, it's good for your soul. It's a good thing for your life. The next verse, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, in verse 14 it says, And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. You see anybody that's sitting that's not going to work? You see this person that's just going to freeload and sit around and do nothing and expect someone else to take? The Bible says don't hang out with him. Don't make him think that everything's okay. You actually want him ashamed of, his, of, his, of him doing nothing. You want him ashamed that he won't work. Now, understand, he's not telling you to banish them and hate them or treat them badly. Notice the next verse, verse 15. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. You want to bring him to shame over that because you love him. You want him to see that he needs to get up and do something. He needs to work. He needs that physical fatigue. Instead of keeping from the sin. That's how important it is. It's so important. He would have you not keep company with a brother that won't work. Turn over to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Bible says, Galatians chapter 6. Verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The Lord wants you working. Remember what it's talking about. 
looking at everything in the proper context, when he says, be not weary, he's talking about working, laboring, actually working. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If you keep plowing forward, you keep working hard, and you don't get weary, you'll get the result. I'm going to give you an example. Try to get in physically good shape. Be healthy. Get rid of body fat. Get some strength. Be, have some muscles so that I can physically work when I go to work. Being able to do the job. Here, I'm going to tell you, at my age... Being physically in shape is important, not because I want to look good with no shirt on. That'd be a bonus, but that's not why I want to get in shape. I want to get in shape so that I can physically pick up my grandchild and set her on my shoulder when she wants me to. When, I, when my grandkids want me to pick them up and run around and play, when I'm supposed to run around in the yard and hunt dragons or whatever they decide they do. I mean, I, I, I watch Shayla running out there playing Ninja Turtles with her kids. Literally running around playing. And all I could think of was like, man, I, I would die. I couldn't survive what she's doing right now. I want to be in shape so I can do that. I do, and in order to get there, you have to work hard. And during that work, you're going to get tired. You're going to be sweating. Physical fatigue will happen and that's good. What's not good is when you get weary. You see, it's a good thing to work hard to get in shape, to be healthy, so I can play with my grandchildren. But if I get weary, and that, that attacks me a lot, that weary feeling, when I'm not sweating, I'm not breathing heavy, but I still would rather sit on the ground or sit in my chair and not get up and walk over and start working out because it's time to work out. That's weary. When you let it get to your spirit, you let it start weighing on you to the point you start coming up with reasons to quit. And that's what faint is. It says, if we faint, now, if we don't quit, you will get the rewards for the work you put in if you don't quit. As fighters, gentlemen here, all, all been uh, MMA fighters before, <clears throat> one of the, uh, what was his name? Uh, Chelson. Chelson was giving a little speech to some fighters. And he said the most ridiculous statement he's ever heard is quitting is not an option. He said that's absurd. Quitting is the most readily available option in everything. I never heard a truer statement. Quitting. It is always the first option your mind will come up with. And you have to get beyond that to reap the rewards of the work you do in everything. You go to work, you do your job, you're digging a ditch, you're building a house, you're working on an engine, whatever your work is, you have to get beyond the quitting phase so that you can reap the benefits of the work you do. And all of these things are as spiritually required as telling somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he, when he says, uh, be not weary in well-doing, that well-doing, as you see in the context it's given, that's not talking about witnessing about Jesus. It's talking about getting off your butt and doing some work. The kind of work that will provide you food to eat. Be not weary in well-doing. Don't stop working. Don't let that weight on your spirit convince you to quit. In whatever, trying to get in shape so you can pick up your grandchildren or you can run around playing Ninja Turtles or you can do whatever you're going to do, bouncing on a trampoline with them. Whatever it is you're doing, whatever work you have in front of you, the Bible says, be not weary. Don't let your spirit, before you ever even break a sweat, before you ever even get out of breath, don't let your spirit make you quit. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. Verse 9 says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Verse 10, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good. Now again, the context of what we're talking about, what is that good? It's working. 
actual work, physical work. Let us do good unto all men. Every opportunity you get, work. And then he says, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You got brothers and sisters around you in Christ? Do good, work, labor. And don't get weary. Don't let your spirit feel weighed down. Be tired. Don't be weary. Work. And not just work, but work that's helping those around you. Uh, with everything else we talk about, the Lord gives you instruction. He always gives you means to understand how to do that. Isaiah chapter 40. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. The Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Who is it that gets to not be weary? Who is that person that won't quit, that will not faint? They that wait upon the Lord. That's an interesting term, wait upon the Lord. In uh, Psalms chapter 27 and verse 14, the Bible says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Turn over to two more places. Lamentations chapter 3 and Proverbs chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3 and then Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to go to Lamentations first. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 25. The Lord is good. Now, if there's anything you want in this life after getting saved, I want salvation. Once you get saved, if there's something else you want, you know what it should be? The Lord to be good to me. I want the Lord to be good. And the Lord is good unto them that wait for Him. Proverbs chapter 3, starting at verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, starting at verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. You know where fatigue, spiritual fatigue, you know where you get weary? It's because what you're doing is your means of doing it. We get weary when we try to do work or we try to labor on our own timing, on our own path, instead of waiting to see what the Lord laid out in front of us. We get ahead of the Lord and get weary. You want to not get weary? Take a moment and look to see what God says about it. Wait on the Lord. Trust in His direction. Not your own. I'll tell you what, man. You look around the state of this country. You want to feel fatigued spiritually. You want to feel weary in your soul and in your heart about the condition of this world. Start trying to look for the fix. Start trying to figure out when are things going to shift. When is this going to happen? When is that going to... You start trying to do that. And you'll feel the weariness. You want to have some peace and comfort and enjoy your life? Trust that the Lord's got this under control. And then, actually wait on Him. You see, if I'm waiting on the Lord to fix this country right now, then nothing that's going on concerns me. Nothing. Because if I'm waiting on Him... And he hasn't made something visible yet. It's not supposed to be visible yet. Now you want to get weary. Let me try to figure out what it is. Let me try to get ahead of his timing. Let me try to get ahead of what he's doing. That will wear you down quickly. I know because I was doing it for a long time. Trying to guess. Well, well when is this going to happen? Why isn't this going on? What should be going on here? Trying to figure out myself. Trying to find a way to do it myself. Then I started waiting on Him. And you know what I saw in this world? As corrupt as things are, as twisted and backwards and wrong as everything is, the moment I stepped back and said, you know, I'm going to wait upon the Lord. You know what I saw? 
I saw that my grandkids, my grandkids are having a blast every day. I saw that my grandchildren are being raised perfectly. I saw that they're healthy and they're happy. I saw that my children are doing well. I saw that I get the opportunity to be around my children and around my grandchildren all the time. So many men my age and in my situation don't. I saw that I have a job. I saw that my family has food. I saw that we have entertainment. We have peace and comfort. I actually saw that regardless of what the rest of the world looks like, God's got me and mine doing pretty good. Why? What am I? And, and if he's doing, and you can say, okay, well, yeah, but what about the people that don't? Guess what? Don't walk with the Lord. Don't have peace. I'm not special. If he'll keep me in mind, he'll keep absolutely every other person that waits on him. Simple as that. You want peace and joy? Wait for him to handle things. And you'll get the opportunity to notice how incredible everything is that he's in control of. The biggest problem you have in a Christian life is getting tired because, not because you're doing things right, you're getting tired because you keep trying so hard to do it the wrong way. Look for God's direction and actually, it's a big one, wait for it. And all of a sudden, everything's easy. My favorite passages in the entire Bible, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Wait on Him. And then all of a sudden, you stop trying to look for your own path. You start seeing the path that He has right in front of you. And generally, it looks pretty good. <laughs> 